guys, and welcome back to another Unfiltered Gamer board game review for the game Shadow Tactics. But, as you may or may not have known, I already did review this game previously down below, link in the description. We're talking about the cooperative mode of the game. Yes, Shadow Tactics has a competitive one versus many mode, and they also have a cooperative mode where you can play all the missions as though you're all working together as the Shinobi against the evil Hokage, and uh, you will be able to utilize your own specific ninjas to fight against the randomized AI version of the bad guys or the villains. You'll be utilizing dice to determine where the certain units are going to go and based on how many actions they'll get and movement points, as well as a certain action card to determine that as well. You'll set up all the missions very similarly to how you would normally set them up with utilizing specific different tokens that will randomize locations of the different bad guys and try and complete the objectives as received based on the objective board. Will you be able to, as the Shinobis, defeat the evil Hokage? as well as, of course, the AI in this cooperative mode. We'll discuss a bit about how the cooperative mo mode works and how you're going to be utilizing the AI, and then we'll come up and discuss my review for the game. This video will be a little shorter because, for the most part, if you want to know how to play the game specifically, check out the link in the description for my first review, which gives you a full in-depth idea of how to play the game. This one will specifically talk about the main aspects of the cooperative mode, and then, of course, the review for the cooperative element of the game, Shadow Tactics, currently funded. Link in the description to pick it up. It's already done, but there's there's a pre-order link available to you. So here is Shadow Tactics, the board game, and I went ahead and put everything that I have they've given me, which includes the base game and, of course, the expansion, which will provide you with additional tiles and cards, as well as two unique new characters, like one of these guys here is the uh, raccoon. Uh, I've already kind of explained the rules to this game, so we're going to kind of skip over that. If you do want to check out, like I've said before, and I'll say again, I'm sure, link down below in the description for our other video, which explains the game's concept, but we're just going to talk about the solo mode of the game. And for the most part, everything is pretty much set up the same way as far as the players are concerned. They're each going to get their stack of cards, their health, and their um, specific player card that shows if they're damaged or not. There's going to be nine cards that they'll get. They'll utilize this board here. Uh, you're going to set the game up based on the specific mission, which will come in this little mission booklet. You'll choose the mission you want to play, set the board up, gather all the setup items, and that could include the different officers and any of these specific you know, unique tokens that you'll include, as well as a time limit and a glory limit. Uh, you're going to set aside, of course, your time cards, so your stun tokens tokens and your uh, confusion and whatnot, all these tokens that you'll use to place on the specific villains. Uh, each of your characters are going to go on the board and where they would normally go. But what does change, however, is you will be utilizing these guys here. These are randomization tokens. They're going to have a number between uh, 1 and 20. You're going to shuffle them up and place them all in these areas here in the middle, as well as where any other items may or may not go. Then you're going to flip them all over, and then based on priority, you'll be placing down units. So for instance, if this was where the 1 was and this was where the 2 was, You'll place the, an officer here, because that would be the first one in priority, and then you would place an, a, another officer over here. Now, there is also setup requirements, like you can only have this many, this officer this many spaces away, so you're going to make sure that it balances out that way, but it's very, very simple as far as it goes. You're going to place out all the items in order based on where you place these tokens out. Set aside these die as well. There's going to be certain die that will be used for movement, which are these two die here. You have an eight-sided die and a ten-sided die, but they have different movement numbers on them, and this one right just from 0 to, I believe, 6. And this one over here is uh, 0 to 6 as well. And then you're also going to have uh, what the bad guys that are going to spawn throughout the game are. And then, of course, the positioning, where they're going to face when they move into certain areas. As well as, of course, some other key items as well, uh, included. Uh, you're also going to get one of these cards and give it one out to every single player playing the game. And in this setup here, we have these three characters. So it would be a three-player game. And you're going to go ahead and take one of these and you'll place it on the board in the second slot for the bad guy. And that's generally where it's going to stay throughout the entire game. So when players place out their cards, they're going to go up here like they normally would. And everybody's going to get one of these cards as well so that they can see what the bad guy is going to do in order. And it'll explain, okay, in this first it's going to move, then they're going to go ahead and deploy units, and then they're going to do this and that and so on and so forth. And you'll check and see what they each do in order, and then you're going to roll that required die. And it'll also tell you what happens when you spawn 
units and where they go. The rules are very specific as to how it works, and it's all rather simple. Uh, when you look into it, there's a section for each of them, and once you've gathered them, you'll understand. Uh, but for the mo most part, basically, you'll take your action, the first player's action, then you'll go here, and you'll go throughout each of the actions in order that the bad guys will do. The bad guys are going to move in certain areas. There's certain restrictions as to making sure that when you place units out on spaces, you have to allow it to have at least three guys in each space. Um, when they know that there's a dead body, they'll have to try and make it there. If you roll the die and uh, you roll a zero for movement or not enough, you're, when you're trying to move to a certain area that may have a dead body, you won't make it there, but you have to expend as much um, as much, much movement as you possibly can. You're always going to be turning to face the uh, ninjas when you can. Uh, dead bodies and everything else like that functions the same way. If, for instance, this guy were to pass away, you'd also uh, functions in the same way with orders comparatively to movement. So you have to make sure you have units that are near other officers in order to move and of course when you spot dead bodies when playing as the or when utilizing the bad guy it's always basically and what i always say for mostly for ai is you always have to follow the most likely thing that a, a player would do uh, so don't make it easier on yourself and um you know so instance this guy would become uh, enraged or he would be notified of the death of his his friend that he's found on the floor there um and that's basically the idea of the game it plays just like the other one like i said and you want to know the full rules of the game because there's quite a bit you can go ahead and check out that video but uh, the idea is simply you're going to be placing this card out in the second slot after you go ahead and do the setup you'll play the normal game and then of course whenever the alarm triggers this will flip over you'll place it here in this main slot meaning that the bad guy will go first and you'll take uh, these actions into consideration as well and of course uh, whenever cards are, are played from the tool belt and whatnot these guys will have their own specific actions as well that they can utilize uh, and that's the idea of the game for the cooperative mode let's come up and discuss the game a little bit and uh, tell you guys where to pick it up if you're interested. So the cooperative element of the game is very similar to playing the base game. You'll be utilizing the same missions and you'll be utilizing the same characters and of course the same villains. But what is different is the way that the enemies are going to be allocated, in which ways they move, how they move, and the utilizing of the different die for the random elements of the enemy movement and gathering of information. Enemies are still going to try and find dead bodies, place them themselves near you to try and assess the situation as best they possibly can and become alerted to your presence if they're able to, thusly doing damage to you, preventing your ninjas from being able to do certain actions, reducing your availability of actions and hopefully running out of time to the point where they're able to succeed. Of course, the game does get more and more complex as you move along and the more different types of missions that you attempt to do, the more challenging it's going to get for you because enemies are going to start spawning, the different specific characters are going to be utilized their different abilities to kind of position themselves to deal with you as the best they possibly can. Yes, it is different in the terms of uh, probably not going to be as intelligent as a normal player might be when playing as the villain. However, it does a very excellent job of it for being an AI. It's also really nice because it's very simple as to how it works. It'll be placed in the second slot. If the alarm triggers, it'll go into the first slot. You'll be utilizing these actions every time unless the alarm triggers in which you'll flip over and utilize these and follow the simple step-by-step -step instructions that everyone will have have available them to, to go ahead and check out. And they're all the same. It's always straightforward and simple. Another awesome little thing is the randomized element of the different items. One little small confusing thing, I suppose, is the fact that enemy units are considered items. So when you're placing out the beginning setup of the game, Make sure you understand that those enemy units are part of the itemization, the randomization of the setup. And so you'll, you'll be utilizing these tokens for not only them, but anything else that might come out in the game. And as you know from my previous review, there's a ton of different things that are going to be included in the game if you purchase the base game and all the different little extras that are included, such as uh, the winter aspect of the game with the expansion or the night and the day effects. Uh, this all plays in tandem with the cooperative variant of the game. Uh, I would say that if you wanted a game that's tactics filled that doesn't involve with some player playing as the bad guy this is definitely a mode I would suggest taking a look at. This game is not going to provide any differentiation between play it's still going to feel very similar to the base game uh, but what it does do is allows players to just simply work together cooperatively to solve strategic puzzles in order to achieve their mission it becomes less of a where do I think they're going to go and where does the enemy know you're going to go and how you can best mitigate the damage that might be coming towards you. When playing 
playing the first mission specifically against the cooperative with the cooperative variant, it was a little easier than playing against the competitive variant. However, in the cooperative variant, we still only had one or two specific rounds left over in which to complete our goals, and otherwise we would have lost. So it still came down to a wire, uh, even at just the basic level of the game, which was nice. We felt like we still played the game and it wasn't super, super easy, but at the same time, it wasn't near impossible and these units were constantly on us the entire time. We got to do what we wanted to do. It utilizes a bunch of the mechanics from the base game and just puts in a nice, simple AI to allow you to play cooperatively with each other. If you want a cooperative game, like I said, it's going to do that for you. As far as the review for the game goes, I've kind of explained what I feel about the base game as it stands. Quality is excellent. The theme is beautiful, works really well with the artwork and the component quality is really high. This is basically kind of like a mid prototype, I think, because they've done, they did changes of the game and they switched it out. There's going to be better quality miniatures and whatnot. This is all resin that I have. Uh, but what is here presents a beautiful looking game. It's well put together, well made. Each of the different scenarios works really well in tandem with each other. And there's kind of this scenario based thing that you can do where you're going to be gathering items and buying things from the shop, working together to cooperatively utilize these tool belt items and special skills uh, that you will progressively gain as you play the game. It becomes more complicated. There's different types of events that happen. You'll be able to basically rescue certain people or this hostage events and all this kind of thing uh, that you're going to be able to play as you move on. And so it doesn't feel stale. You don't feel like you're just going in, fight the bad guys, and you're done. There's always different elements of play, including different mechanics that kind of get brought up as well as, of course, the expansion content. Regardless, though, I had a ton of fun playing the cooperative element of this game. This is probably what I would prefer out of the two, which is kind of odd because usually I'm more a fan of playing against the back and forth. Um, if I had to choose a competitive element, I'd like to play as the bad guy. But when I had to choose between just the two cooperative or competitive mode, I like playing as the cooperative mode because it becomes more of a strategic puzzle, understanding that they're going to go in certain areas there's a little bit of luck involved because you are rolling die to determine orientation of the villains and how many movement they're going to get and they might get lucky in getting the best rolls but you can still mitigate that and win the game if you choose wisely based on the positioning of your different ninjas throughout the game a solid overall fun game a shadow tactics is one that i'm going to be revisiting and i'm very excited hopefully i'll get a chance to see what it looks like when it's fully done with everything but as it stands what's here this is going to stay in my collection until if i do get a production copy uh, or sample of the game to show off for one of my live streams which i've already played live we have to play this game live and it was a ton of fun a big big fan here of shadow tactics and if you haven't taken a look at it you have a chance to right now link down below in the description the kickstarter is over but there is availability for you to pick it up and pre-order it now that the campaign is done Thank you guys for watching another Unfiltered Gamer board game review for the game Shadow Tactics. If you'd like to pick up the game, link down below. Like I said, um, I'm very, very impressed with this game. Uh, you can also go ahead and check out Kelly's game, which funded on Kickstarter, it is fully done now. There will be a pledge manager open uh, if it's not already open, as well as, of course, Backer Kit, where you can pre order the game. We'll have that open for a little bit of time for anybody who missed out on the campaign. Uh, we've unlocked every single stretch goal for the game, so I'm very excited about that. It is a puzzle based game that you'll basically try and some complete open and closed objectives utilizing your mermaids uh, to score certain shells in certain areas. There's a rotating board that you'll be moving around, pulling certain pieces off of the board and putting them onto your treasure chest to score those points. Uh, Mermeeples is an entire expansion that's on there. You can see everything that is included in the campaign. For 40 bucks, you can't go wrong with this one, I think. Um, I'm very impressed and very proud of my wife for accomplishing this goal. It was really, really cool and fun experience as well. Uh, you can also go ahead and check out our live streams every Wednesday, 6.30 p.m. PST. We play games literally just like this one every Wednesday. And in fact, we did play this one on Wednesday if you want to go ahead and check that out. And you can also go ahead and check out our Patreon and our Discord links will be down below in the description. We appreciate you patreon so much for supporting us all this time and allowing us to continue doing our live streams and improve over and over again we now stream on every single platform twitch facebook and youtube every wednesday so you can catch us in any of those to watch us play these fun games all right guys that's all i got for you this time and as always i look forward to battling out in the shadows with you next time battling out in the shadows it's a pretty good one actually <laughs>